Okay, so this is uh, the recording for the masterclass um, on synthesizing the research. So, um, the first thing we kind of want to look at is what is synthesis? Um, if you look at your performance standards, you'll see that it's 30% of your outcome mark and it's the first performance standard, so it's often referred to as S1. Um, however, most importantly, it's actually, it's the answer to your question. So if you've asked to what extent, it's the extent, significantly or not, and the reasons why. If you've asked about why something is happening, it's the reasons. The how is the explanation. You need to have a main answer to your question. And what can be confusing is that this main answer to the question might be that it's actually a lot more complicated than you thought. So if you said um, uh, to what extent, you might actually say, well, depending on who you are and what your involvement is, the extent changes. That's still an answer. When we're looking at synthesis, uh, you will be marked on how complex your answer is. Have you been able to consider multiple perspectives, looked at pros and cons, positives and negatives, individual and social, you know, whatever it is that you've actually been able to find out. When you have both supporting and uh, evidence that is, I guess, more variable, you're allowing yourself to produce a much more sophisticated piece. This is because uh, if you can say to me, um, the sky is blue and I have a source that proves this and I have another source that supports that, and while some other people might say it's yellow, I can disprove them because of these points, well then you've got a really strong argument. So when you're doing your synthesis, um, I guess the things we're looking for are that you've got really clear topic sentences or outlines of your piece, that you're linking back to your overall question constantly throughout everything. You're linking your focus areas into your answer. So um, you might find that your focus questions are no longer the best way to order your argument, which is a really normal thing to happen. And so you decide to actually group your evidence by different criteria, but you still bring in the research from your focus areas. Uh, we should have analysis and thinking. Uh, this 30% is you interpreting your evidence. So it's really important that you actually interpret that evidence. Um, when we are asking you to work through this, often people will say, I don't have an answer. And that's where you've got to really stop and say, okay, well, what are all the possible answers and how do they work together? So um, this is sophisticated research. Like it shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to answer your question in five or 10 words. You've got 1500 or 2000 words. So you should actually have um, a really sophisticated answer to work through this. So um, the criteria sheet is um, a document that you can get on the SaceBoard website. We've also got them printed in the library for you. You're welcome to grab them. Um, obviously, I don't have them because I had them in hard copy. Um, so what I wanted to do was to kind of give you some examples of how this works. So uh, this question is, to what extent can hypnotherapy be used to treat depression? So um, when we look at this topic, the answer is that there's considerable debate about this. Um, it's not clear why this works and individuals will often see success in various treatments, but not all of them can guarantee it. So that means that the answer to the question is to some extent it can be used, but this extent varies dependent on the person or the individual. And so when I lay out my synthesis, it's going to look like this. In the intro, I'm going to tell them that it's variable and it can be effective in some circumstances. I would then define it because it has some very specialized vocabulary. Um, I would then talk about why it's been effective, but I'd then have to talk about the variables that impact.